In the following video, we're going to examine how to solve a system of inequalities. Now, when you're solving a system of inequalities, the solution is the overlapping of all of the other shaded regions. So remember a few things when we are solving system of inequalities. We need to keep in mind, do we use a dashed versus solid line? Remember, dashed are for less than or greater than and solid lines are for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. We then need to ask ourselves, where do we shade? When it says y is greater than, y is less than, you ask yourself above or below. When it says x is less than, x is greater than, you ask yourselves left or right. And then when you are, since we're dealing with inequalities, you need to remember when do you flip the symbol. And so when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to remember to flip that inequality symbol. So these are some general rules to keep in mind when you are solving systems of equations. So we'll keep these, th these three things in our mind when we start our examples. Remember to graph. You need to put them in slope-intercept form. So again, since we're looking for the overlapping of the shaded region, I'm going to use different colors to make it easier for us. So if I have x minus 2y is greater than or equal to negative 2, I would subtract x from both sides to give me negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative 1x minus 2. And then I would divide everything by negative 2. And so I get y. Negative and negative is a positive, so I have a positive 1 half x. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1. And since I divide it by negative here, I have to remember to flip the inequality symbol. So instead of y greater than or equal to, I'm going to say y is less than or equal to. So to graph this, you have a slope of 1, sorry, a y-intercept of 1. A slope of one half, so up one right two, up one right two, up one right two, and you go the opposite direction down one left two, and down one left two, and down one left two. And then we have to again ask ourselves do we use a solid or dashed line? So since this says y is less than or equal to, I'm going to use a solid line through these points. And since it says y is less than, I'm going to shade towards all of my lesser y values. So here's my y-axis. All the smaller values are down here. And so to shade on systems of inequalities, I use little lines like this. And we're going to see why after we graph the next inequality. So the next one, x plus y is less than or equal to negative 1. I would subtract x to cancel it out and get y is less than or equal to negative x minus 1. And so I have a y-intercept of negative 1, so I'll plot it. A slope of negative 1, so down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, and so on and so on across the entire grid. And I can go up 1, left 1 as well. And again, I have to ask myself, am I going to use a dashed or a solid line? And since it says y is less than or equal to, less than or equal to is a solid line. And my lesser y values are down here on the y-axis. So the reason I use these lines instead of actually shading and coloring in is so I can see the overlapping easier. Where these two lines intersect, the way I sketch them, I see a crisscross pattern. So I can tell that my intersection region is right here. So I am going to erase the other lines. And then I am going to shade in my solution region. And so here's where the overlapping is. And so this is my solution region. 
And so it's that simple. You grab the first inequality, use the lines for the shading. Second inequality, use the lines, and then look where do they overlap. And where they overlap is where you shade in for the solution. So let's look at example two. Y is greater than 2 thirds X plus 2, and Y is less than 2 thirds X minus 1. And so for this one, I don't need to convert them to slope intercept form. They are already converted to slope intercept form for me. So I have a Y intercept of 2 for the first one, and a slope of 2 thirds, so up 2, right 3, up 2, right 3, and then the other direction, down 2, left 3, down 2, left 3. And we have to look at it. Y is greater than, so is that a dashed or solid line? And so that's going to be a dashed line. And since it says greater than, I want to shade towards all of my greater Y values. So that's up here on my Y axis. So I'm going to shade above this line. And again, use the little lines to show the shaded area. And when I graph the next one, Y is less than 2 thirds X minus 1. So Y intercept of negative 1, up 2, right 3 up two right three and go down two left three and down two left three and so this is going to be a dashed line as well because it does say y is less than so that's my dashed line and all my lesser values are below it so i'm going to shade below and so remember the solution for a system of inequalities, I worded it in the beginning as the overlapping of the shaded regions. And when I look at this example, the blue and the green do not overlap each other. So there is a no, there's no solution region. There is no solution for this system of inequalities because there is no overlapping. Now, don't assume that just because you see parallel lines that it's going to be a no solution. Because if I were to switch these two inequalities, make this a less than, I would have shaded below it. Make this a greater than, I would have shaded above it. And then this space in between would have been my solution space. It's always important to understand the concept. And the concept says, look for overlapping. And since they do not overlap, it's a no solution. So let's try example three. Now, when I look at example three, when students look at example three, they see that first one absolute value of X is less than three. And that's that's the hard one to graph. We're going to save that one for the end so we can spend some time on it. Because I look at the other two inequalities, I see Y is greater than or equal to X minus two. And Y is less than or equal to negative one half X plus four. Now, those I can graph and I can graph those very easily. So I'm going to do the y is greater than or equal to x minus 2, I'm going to use blue for that one. And so I have a y intercept of negative 2. Now when you have a slope of 1, you can go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. If I wanted to, and you have to understand how slope works, you could also go you know, up 3, right 3, because that's 3 over 3, which is 1. I can go up 1, right 1. I could go down 2, left 2, if I want, as long as I follow slope. And so when I do this, I have a solid line because as y is greater than or equal to, so that's a solid line. And since it says greater than, I shade towards my greater y values. And so that would be above this line. And so I'm going to shade towards those greater y values. Again, using those lines so I can see the overlapping. For this one, I'm going to use green. So negative 1 half x plus 4. So y intercept of positive 4. The slope of negative 1 half. So down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. And so on. I can go up 1, left 2. And since this one says less than or equal to, since it's or equal to, I have a solid line. And less than means I would shade below. And so right now, what I would do is I would see where do these two inequalities overlap so far? And so far, the blue and the green overlap here. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the other part because I still have one more inequality to graph. And I'm going to erase the other part so I can easily see where the overlapping of all three regions are. And so for this one, I'm going to use purple. Absolute value of x is less than 3. Well, if you remember when we solved absolute value inequalities before, this is a less than and compound inequality when you break it down. It means your x value is between 3 and negative 3. So my x value is between 3 and negative 3 on the x-axis. And this would be a dashed line, dashed vertical line here, and a dashed vertical line here. And since my shade region is between, I'm going to shade between. And when I shade between here, I can see that my overlapping is between those two dashed lines and in between the two inequalities we graphed before into this region. Be sure to erase that part right there. That's one that's always missed because we think we see a triangle when in actuality this is a trapezoid for a shaded region. So be sure to, over, to erase that area there. And so even for inequalities, we can throw back some changing absolute value inequalities into an and or an or. Remember, if it's less than, you pronounce it as less than. If it was a greater than inequality, you would pronounce it as greater or and change it to an or compound inequality. But the general process is the same. Put the inequalities in slope intercept form if needed. And so we did a couple examples where we didn't have to, and we did one where we did. Shade each region. I, I recommend you use little lines for it to look for a crisscross pattern for overlapping, and then erase the rest and shade that region for the solution space. And do be careful to make sure you understand it's the overlapping, because it is possible to have a no solution for it.